Before we keep talking about superposition, let's take a break and let's just get crazy for a minute. Let's imagine simple harmonic motion that we've been talking about. So imagine this object on the x-axis just going up and down. You could describe it with a sinusoid as really just a component of circular motion. Because really, if you think about uniform circular motion, if you just imagine one, how it's moving in one dimension or on one axis, it's actually simple harmonic motion. You can see that here. So circular motion is actually simple harmonic motion on one axis, and it's also simple harmonic motion on this axis, you can see as well. So it's really uh, two sinusoids on two axes, and they're 90 degrees out of phase, is one way to describe circular motion. So we could do that, and if we were going to label these axes, we'd probably call this one the real axis, because this is the real object, right? This is the real thing. This is a figment of our imagination, okay? But the real axis is where the real object moves. And we could label this one the imaginary axis, because that's the one we just imagined, that we just made up. So let's see where this gets us mathematically. So let me see. So how do you normally describe the position of something? Usually, you do it with geometry. So if we were going to describe this position geometrically, we would draw two axes. And I'm going to label the top one x and this one y. It's a little different than you're used to. And we'd say there's some position out here of this object going around in a circle and would say, well, it's um, at a point uh, B right now on the y-axis and at a point A on the x-axis, and we'd probably just draw a vector. And that vector, usually for a position vector, you use an R. So we would say R vector is A i-hat plus B j-hat. Again, keep in mind, i-hat here means the unit vector for x, which I drew vertical. B, or j-hat is the unit vector for y. That's the normal way. And if you do it that way, that's what we've been doing, and you've got to keep up with all these unit vectors and directions. Let's think of another way. What if you could describe that without vectors and just with algebra? That might be useful. Let's see how that might work. So again, you'd want to have a plane, and you'd have some position out here of something going in a circle. And on this axis, it might be at B. And on this axis, it might be at A. And what we're going to do is describe it not with a vector, R. We're going to describe it simply with a number, Z. We'll call it Z. There's going to be no unit vectors on this, OK? And we're going to say Z equals A plus B times J. OK? Z equals A times B plus J. And what we're going to do is we're going to make up a rule. OK, so J means rotate, or now turn, 90 degrees. Okay. So A doesn't necessarily mean a specific direction. Well, let's say you always start going up, and then you can turn, you can do whatever you want. Well, as you go through this algebraic expression, you have to follow these rules. Okay? So what we're saying is you always start going this way. So we start going this way, and you go A. And you say, OK, now I've got to turn 90 degrees to go B, because that's what J means. Anything multiplied by J means turn 90 degrees. All right? And you end up here. All right? So that doesn't look that different. We're just saying, well, you start out in I hat, and J means to turn to, uh, to J hat. It means something else. So if J means turn 90 degrees, what would J squared mean? Well. It would mean you multiply by j, you turn 90, you multiply by j again, you turn back. It means turn 180 degrees. Well, if you turn 180 degrees and then you go, you're going the opposite direction. Right? So j squared then, in terms of algebra, j squared would equal negative 1 in this imaginary world here. Right? If j squared equals negative 1, what does j equal? Then j equals the square root of negative 1. Well, what is the square root of negative 1? There is no square root of negative 1. It's an imaginary number. There is no number when you multiply it by itself, then it can come out negative. Right? That's impossible. So that's why we call these the imaginary numbers. So when we describe this turn 90 degrees, we can actually give it sort of an algebraic um, sense. So j is the unit 
of algebraic numbers, or this is the unit of imaginary numbers. If you've studied imaginary numbers, you may have called it i. So here in this class, we're going to call it j. People go back and forth calling it i and j. Here we're calling it j. It's the unit of the imaginary numbers. And it gives you a way to describe this situation. And you can see it kind of matches the craziness we did a minute ago. We said there was a real axis, so we could call this the real axis. And we just imagined that there was this imaginary axis. So we could call this the imaginary axis. And we use this algebra. It really is the imaginary axis, because the unit along that direction is the square root of negative 1, is the imaginary unit. This sounds strange. Let's see, though, if it, if it gets us anywhere in terms of thinking about motion.